Sziasztok! Hello, this is the Mass Vlog. In the previous episode, we learned that at Mass, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and our own eternal life. Mass takes place in a chapel, church or a basilica. And today we're going to learn about those places. Why do we need churches? Many people say that God is present everywhere. We can turn to him no matter where we are. This is true, but throughout history, people have always longed for and created places where they could encounter the supernatural and the transcendent. During their wanderings, the Jewish people would build a tent for Yahweh, who descended on a cloud to speak with chosen individuals, who then delivered God's message to the people. When the Jewish people settled down, they built a temple for Yahweh, where they gathered to pray and to worship God. During the first centuries AD, Christians were subjected to persecution, and they gathered in private homes to celebrate the Mass, i.e. the Eucharist. The first house, which was specifically converted to function as a church, originated in the third century. It was similar to a synagogue. During the course of church history, churches were built in different styles reflecting the historical era. Even today, we can see churches in Romanesque, Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque, and modern styles. What they all have in common is a sanctuary or apse. The sanctuary contains the altar and the reading stand, also called the ambo. You can also see a fancy chair and other chairs next to it. These are for the priest or bishop celebrating the Mass and for their assistants. Here too is the altar and a small cabinet where the Blessed Sacrament consecrated during the Mass is kept so that it can be taken to the sick. Formerly, this cabinet, or tabernacle, was sunk into the wall. Later they placed it on the altar, sometimes covered with a small Gothic tower. In modern churches, this tabernacle might be located separately, off to the side. Also, there is a sanctuary lamp, which represents the real presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. When we arrive in front of the tabernacle, we greet Jesus by genuflecting. This genuflection is not in honor of the altar, but rather of Christ's presence in the Blessed Sacrament. The sanctuary usually opens onto the sacristy. The sacristy is where we keep the objects needed for Mass and other liturgical events. This is where the priest or the bishop and his assistants vest for Mass. The vestments worn by the priests and the altar servers hang in the closets, and the chalices, patterns, altar linens, candles, and incense burners are also stored in the sacristy. Often technical equipment such as sound systems and projectors are also found here. The vestments in the sacristy come in many different colors. Which colors are worn when? The liturgical year begins with Advent, which means the coming of Christ and precedes the Christmas season. The color of Advent is violet or purple, representing repentance and waiting. Christmas is celebrated in white, and then comes the first season of ordinary time, which coincides with the carnival season. The color of this season is green. This lasts until Ash Wednesday, when Lent begins. The color of Lent is purple, which again expresses repentance and prepares us for Easter. The color of the Easter season is white, lasting until Pentecost, when we commemorate the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the Apostles. Then comes the second season of Ordinary Time, and again we wear green until the first Sunday of Advent. White is also worn on the feast days of certain saints, in addition to white, green, and purple, red vestments are worn at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit appeared as a flame, and on the feasts of the martyrs, apostles, and evangelists. Red is also worn on Palm Sunday and Good Friday. Twice a year, priests can wear pink vestments, which symbolize joy. Pink is worn on the third Sunday of Advent and the fourth Sunday of Lent. Black vestments are worn at funeral services, and gold vestments can be substituted for white. During the liturgical year, Mass is celebrated every single day except one, but Sunday is special. It is celebrated as a main feast since Jesus rose from the dead on that day. This is why the whole Christian community gathers on that day, but why Sunday and why only every seven days? The Jewish people observed the Sabbath as a day of rest on the seventh day, because according to the Bible story of creation, God rested on the seventh day. Christians celebrate this day on Sunday because Jesus rose from the dead at dawn on a Sunday. The peak of the liturgical year is the three days of the Easter Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. On Holy Thursday, we commemorate the Last Supper and the establishment of the sacraments of the Holy Communion and Holy Orders. Good Friday is the only day of the year when no Mass is celebrated. 
On that day Jesus died for us, and on Holy Saturday we celebrate the Resurrection. Most churches have an organ, but what is a musical instrument doing in the house of God? There is an old Christian saying, he who sings, prays twice. Already in synagogues, the psalms were sung, and in many Bibles, the title of each psalm also indicates which melody it should be sung to. In his letter to the Colossians, the Apostle Paul encourages them to sing hymns and holy songs. In other words, song is a particularly good way to give glory to God. Our liturgical songs developed over the course of many centuries. The monophonic Gregorian chant is the main liturgical language of the church. Polyphony and the organ came later. Today the songs at Mass can be accompanied by various instruments, like the guitar. When we enter a church, we are in the nave, the section where the congregation sits. Near the sanctuary, you can see the baptismal font or baptistry, where babies or adults are baptized. Most churches are adorned with paintings or statues. Why are they there? What is their role and function? People have always been ready to make sacrifices to make the house of God as beautiful as possible. So they decorated their church with statues and paintings. Most church paintings depict scenes from the Bible as a method of instruction for people coming to the church. In the era before the printing press, very few people owned Bibles and most people were illiterate. Paintings depicted stories from the life of Jesus so that the faithful could come to know Jesus, learn about his life and become his followers. The statues are not there for us to bow down and worship them. Instead, they are a reminder of the people being depicted. Just like at home, where we display photos of beloved family members, and every time we see the photograph, we are happy to remember them. We can also ask for a saint's intercession, not by worshipping them, but by honouring them and trying to follow their example. Now that we've gotten to know the church where the Mass takes place, in the next episode we'll get into the Mass itself. If you don't want to miss it, please subscribe to the vlog. Music